Dave and Dave, Durban, take one. Where's the camera? There, look there, Dave. Right. Peace. Love Peace out. out. Okay, good. Day one, holiday one. Oh, I need sunglasses. <coughs> Do you not have? Uh -huh. Right, Dave, what's recovery? <laughs> <laughs> Recovery's basically, it's all about going to meetings. No, it's <laughs> not, <laughs> David. <laughs> it's not, it's about getting alive. About, no, that's where you've gone wrong, you see. You've meetings, it's all about meetings. You no, it's meetings. not, it's about getting your life. <laughs> it's, it's about, about integrating it's your about, spiritual program into no, your daily you see, life. This is where so you, you have fun. You see, this is where you've oh. gone totally off the fucking rails, mate. <laughs> useless, useless. <laughs> it's all about meetings. What? Going to them. Meeting what? Um, meeting leaving. up for breakfast, <laughs> meeting up for yes. lunch, meeting. meeting up for coffee. Eating food. Fucking. <laughs> well, that's to nourish. Eating. You have to nourish your recovery with nourishment. What, like Cinnabon? That's and good. curry. That's fair. Where we go? <laughs> that's fair. Where we go? Down the beachfront. Down the beachfront. For brekkie. For breakfast. Okay. Oh. Oh. But it definitely begins with the meeting and it ends with the meeting. That's what I'm here to tell everyone. What but about God? God is interesting, <laughs> but he doesn't eat as much as I hoped he would, basically. <laughs> so, you know, you can take it or leave it as far as I'm concerned. God. Mm. Right, talk about sponsorship. One addict helping another. One addict helping another. <laughs> Stop do this. Second. No, now, seriously. Oh god, it's okay, now, he's gone serious. Sponsorship is the key. It really is. Yeah, no, the blind no, that's leading not true. the bind. It's not true. No. Well, it's fellowship and sponsorship is the key, actually. When I look back, my sponsor pushed me. <coughs> to look at stuff I didn't want to look at. Like? And actually socialised, helped socialise me. Not just him, but the fact that he introduced me to his family and other people. I, I needed to be re-socialised. Mm. Um, and so sponsorship and the calibre of one sponsor is really, I can't overly stress how important that is. Because it's an ongoing journey, uh, I'm still working with my sponsor to some extent on different things you know it's it, it's it really is key it's more key than I ever thought it was actually when I look back I was very lucky to get the sponsor that I did because he has persisted in this journey and so of course David is very lucky to have me I am possibly the best sponsor in the consonants at the moment. Right. <laughs> so let's just talk about the spiritual principle of humility, Dave. How has humility permeated humility. your life and relationship? I, I, I'm a take it or leave it kind of guy, really. <laughs> humility. <laughs> I think it's much over eggs. <laughs> you know, there's a lot to be said for it. On the other hand, <laughs> I am the big I am. So... <laughs> It is a program of humility, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. So you, so you put down the drugs, then what happened? You put down the drugs, and then really chaos ensues. Yeah, it does, huh? Chaos Seriously, ensues. Seriously, it does. I mean, chaos ensues. People seem um, to think that when you stop the drugs, everything's yeah, going to no, be all right. But actually, the, what happens, things seem to get fucking that is worse. the beginning of... Yeah, well, it's the beginning of sort of like a conscious link with the world, which, of course, I didn't have. I did everything to ensure I had no conscious link with the world whatsoever, and I had no emotional link with the world. So chaos ensues. Now, that's why the fellowship and meetings and all of that, you know, they're so important, not because, simply because they involve, they involve me mixing with other human beings who were equally chaotic and didn't know what the fuck was going on. And that, that was the, that was the huge benefit of meeting, certainly in the first few years. Um, yeah, because as I said before, I was, I didn't, hadn't socialized, I didn't know how to socialize. I didn't know how to do anything really. I couldn't go shopping very successfully. 
fucking nightmare. Which has changed deeply in yes, my recovery. Yes, I've become quite though. expert in shopping. But yeah, so I think it is the it's the vacuum, the void that is produced by by stopping the drink and drugs, in some way, makes the illness stronger, and that's why we need this in, this 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 day at a time every day impacting with other people on the same journey just say that again the void of stopping taking drugs i can't say it again i don't i don't oh. i'm not sure what it was it needs to be filled with the spirituality no oh. it's just it needs to be uh, you know it needs to be filled with maybe it's spirituality but but on a basic level it's filled with doing stuff with other people on the same journey you know, so okay. meetings, okay, so meetings are so powerful because they allow you to connect with like-minded people. They they mean that you're doing something for an hour and a half. It's at that level this stuff operates. It's not about some, you know, I go to meetings and have all these blinding revelations. That's probably just madness, you know. Um, it's simple stuff. Showing up, taking a service position, taking a service getting position, a bit of structure. Turning up when you don't want to, which for me was most of the time. Um, I didn't want to go to meetings, I didn't want to talk to my sponsor, I didn't want to talk to anyone about anything other than something light and trivial. I didn't want to speak Why? about... Just, I'd start feeling stuff, I'd start being emotional, I didn't trust anyone. Spirituality was for hippies. Um, I didn't like any of that. I didn't trust anyone, that's what probably what it was. I didn't yeah. trust anyone. So, so... Well, why would you? Indeed. Why so all these you? things are about socialising, aren't they, I guess? Building trust, how to be vulnerable with others, how to be strong with others. All these kind of things that, for me, got picked up in the later steps. How um, long did it take? The steps? No, or the ju process? Ju just, just the process and coming to believe, I guess. Coming to believe I, I that you can live a happy life without uh, drinking drugs. I think about five. Shit, we should have gone down. Five, five days? Five, five weeks? Five, five, about five years. Five years? Yeah, about five to six years. I remember I, I finished the 12 steps. It took me about five years to do the 12 steps. And I, I had a... Particularly round six and seven, I really. But began. that's just madness. How can you expect someone to wait five years for a solution? Don't care. Oh. Do what they do. <laughs> I'm just saying that's what it took me. I mean, other people they do what they want. If I can tell them it's, it's going to take you five weeks if that helps, but you know, when I look back, now of course I thought all this had happened in five months or five weeks. But when I look back, I realised. That nah, had, you know, it was a, it was a process. So, you know, and maybe some other people will get it quicker than me. I'm sure they will. What do you get? Um, I think perversely, what one gets, what I got, was that it is a day at a time, and nothing else really matters. Living in the living in the now. moment. You know, I understood that when I came round. You know, I understood that intellectually. I think it took me five or six years. To, to actually for the penny to drop and for me to begin live behaving like that might be the case. Yeah. That that was um But then when I look back now, it feels different now, you know, so after sort of twenty years I think I feel differently. How do you feel about your anonymity? really think too much about it it's out there I don't particularly like people breaking my anonymity uh, it's mine to break but I've done a fairly good job of kind of breaking it you know I kind of think you know what's that it is part of who I am it's a recovering addict it's part of who I am and um, and I remember when I was coming around there were guys who had a lot of clean time and I knew who they were and and that really helped me you know it helped me believe Oi! it helped me believe you know that um, it was possible because I didn't think it was possible you see that was my thing it was never gonna work for me I was never gonna be a year yeah, clean. we can go there Havana music cafe oh, for lovely. cigars lovely yeah. 
yeah, I never thought it was going to work for me. So I think I was just picking my nose there. So. That's all right. So it's yeah, only, yeah. So I'm sure, sure this is going to go in. viral. You're such a fucking <laughs> yeah. spiritual yeah. guru. Make sure, I'm sure it we'll stays like in there. Yeah. Three hits. Yes, my wife will be very pleased that that's in there. Yeah, sorry, you were saying? Uh, can't remember. Okay. Um, what's it like being in recovery and then being a therapist? A qualified professional that oh that's a big sign because uh. for me I mean my struggle was I mean I love recovery so much I made a career out of it and then having the job and being in the role of uh, you know a working in the profession fucking became difficult for me it was much easier when I was working in computers and I could just kind of wake up and go to work and fix computers. Yes, yes. When I... Oh, there's a car accident. Ow. <clears throat> yeah? Mm. How's, how's that been for you? I d um, it's, I'm still wondering. It's quite... Um, Because some people think you need to be in recovery to be a good therapist, which is a load of fucking bollocks. And, uh, and other people think that if you are in recovery and you're a therapist, that you add no value and you need to be qualified and understand all the theory in that. And the answer is somewhere in between. For I, me. I imagine for me. Yeah, no, I mean, I think that they're two separate things, aren't they? Being in recovery has got nothing to do with being a therapist. It doesn't give you any qualification. It means you're a human being who's recovering from some kind of addiction. Um, so, like any other human being, you know, being a therapist, if you suddenly call yourself one, well, then you are. Um, yeah. So, for me, it was really important to get the qualifications as a therapist. And, in a sense... Um, and in addiction, you know, I wanted to understand, if you like, what I didn't agree with okay. in, in, a, in, a, in a better way. I wanted to, to have a sense of, well, if I disagree with stuff, you know, my general way is to sort of rail against it. Whereas it, it, I, th I wanted to be able to more than just rail against it, to be able to, to say, no, no, I understand this. I understand where it's coming from, but here's more of a sort of cogent argument as to why I don't agree with it or I don't go along with it. For example? Um, Oh, I don't know. I mean, this sort of the, the things like um, harm reduction, you know, this sort of polarizing of harm, harm reduction is good or bad, but, you know, understanding it better, you know, realizing it, it's a tool. It's a tool that one can use in a useful way for some clients, and that same way might be not useful for another client. You know, that's why, you know, being a therapist, it's about being a good therapist. Um, what does know, that mean? About, about, the extent to which we understand that we're in the room with the client, the, the extent to which we understand the model, the extent to which we can convey the model, you know, as a cognitive behavioral psychotherapist, I, I, I need to be able to convey the model um, because my job is to kind of do myself out of a job. Um, Good. To be able to help the client, I love that. you know, go to a, to a place maybe where they don't want to go. So it's helpful that I've gone to places I don't want to go so I, I can. I can authentically say, you know, sometimes Pract when practice people what you preach. yeah, and when you can say, you know, when it's that saying, isn't it, when someone says, yeah, I understand what you mean, and they, you know, there's there's that moment when you look at them in the eye and you you you, you realise they do, or you realise they don't. <laughs> They're just saying it, you know, and that level of that level of inauthenticity is what I do see in some therapists. Um, which says to me they really fundamentally do not understand what they're doing as therapists, regardless of whether it's addiction or any kind of, you know, they really, to be able to do that, you've got to have more front than Harrods, you know, that, that's really not good. So I think it really it is about being, a, it is about understanding the therapeutic skills and learning, endlessly learning, you know, I'm, I'm just learning all the time. Um, and yeah, then, and I then, often find that, I often find the clients that I that sit in front of me, they've got the exact same stuff going on for them that's yes. showing up in my life. Yes. And, yes. Uh, yeah. and we resonate, don't we? And resonate, it's, it's, yeah. We resonate that and then it's about what do, how can, can we make use of that? Can we make use of our vulnerability and their vulnerability? Can we make use of what's happening in the room in that moment? 
um, and then it helps to have tools it helps to be qualified it helps to have studied you know um, as opposed to just having clean time yeah having clean time it means nothing but I go to seven meetings a week and I have been for seven years so that and that's great for your recovery <laughs> I imagine um, I don't know you might be boring as hell you might you know I, mean, I don't know I don't know what the, all of that I think to me it's like I'm making this up but you know the first five years is about really nailing the, it's like going to the gym you know you, what it all means is no, no interest to anyone what, 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 what's it all about it doesn't matter it's that are you clean for the first five years and you've got you put it in the bank you know, you're going to meetings you've worked steps you, you, you know when I look back, that, that's all that really, it, it was the fact that I stayed clean for five years enabled me to then move into other areas in, in my discovery of myself from a firm kind of base. Then I could just start arguing in my head about, well, do I need all these meetings or what's all that about, you know. It's again, it's like what we said about the studying, isn't it? It's all right sort of being arguing about meetings when you're clean and you've done 3,794. Look, 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 easy does it. Oh yeah. Yeah, do you know what I mean? That's what I do like about the fellowship. I must admit, you can go anywhere in the world and straight away there are like, kind of like-minded, mad people like you. Yes. I mean, we bumped it. I mean, we went out for supper with someone that we both met in the fellowship, what, 15 years ago? Yes. And uh, it was like it kicked off exactly where Yeah, where it was it a joy. Lived. It was yeah. a joy. It is a great thing to be part of that. For me, that's, fellowship has become the key. You know, that, that connection with other human beings. So that's a very human thing, so isn't it? So connection is the key. Yeah, it's connection. And it doesn't matter where you get the connection. I mean, no, it might, it might no. be a church or it might, it might be... Yeah, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Connection with humanity, humility. The humility to, to understand that we need that to feel it to feel that I, can't, I don't want to no, it's not that I can't do this on my own which is true but it's I don't want to do this on my own I don't want to I don't want to be right what I want is to be loved and to love and that is invaluable recovery has given me that I want to, opportunity I want to be loved yeah and to love. to love yeah and to feel that and that I couldn't do that when I was using when I used uh, and in early recovery I found that really hard that's taken me a long time to, to recover my humanity what do you think took it I, I mean did you have it I, think, I believe when I was born I did yeah I believe yeah. I, I moved from a place of having it a place of freedom and uh, and just yeah just fucking running around in the same yeah, and I think playing I'm, soldiers. Yeah, or, yeah, and whatever it is, you know, if it is an illness. Man and all that yeah, stuff. yeah, exactly. Freed, lib that 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 untouched place where we could just breathe, and we were emotional, and we had, we 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 experienced emotions fully uh, as little children, and then somewhere along the line, we learnt it wasn't helpful. On planet Earth, to do too much of that, we, whether that's the illness, oh, you get your head kicked in. Yeah, you know, and you let the rules of the playground. Are we actually going back to that place that you saw? I don't know. I'm just driving around it. Oh, I see. Yeah, I wanted to. I mean, fairly... this is a shaka here. I'm just, I'm, I'm just trying yes. to see if it's open today. Yes. But there'll be lots of places in there. I mean, Graham said we should go to that place there for egg and bacon and coffee. That's true. Do you want to go there? It's on the beachfront. Yes, let's do that. I mean, that is one of the things I do love about recovery is I can just fucking get up and go and do something. But like, when you've got a serving addiction, oh. it's not. No, I can't leave. I yeah, can't no, go. No, I haven't no, got no, enough no, stash no, with no. me. It's terrible. You're too far away from the methadone clinic. No, it's or, or, or. Yeah. And that that goes on for years, not days and weeks. It's we're totally sort of institutionalized I mean it's just institutionalized how do you stop recovery and getting people that become institutionalized 
How do you stop recovery? Well, well, we're, 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 we're people like, uh, you know, they're always in fucking rehab. Stagnate. Or, or, yeah, or they, or, you know, the family can't make a decision until you've got a whole fucking therapeutic team there. And, you know, like... I don't. I suppose the glib answer is, is, is you, stop, you stop recovery by picking up. Hey? How do you stop recovery? So maybe the, the, the I mean, it's a, so would everyone's you pick up, impacted by it. So what do you pick up? You pick up either a drug or a drink, or you pick up, don't you, you pick up the old family ways. You, you know, so if my, if my dad goes on a bender, our whole family responds in a certain way, and we're all kind of hooked into that. Yes, so that would and, be and that would be how it impacts on your recovery. Yeah, well, it impacts, yeah, exactly. exactly. Yeah, yeah. My recovery, your, your, my family's recovery, yes, yes, yes. the way that I get set yes. up in the system. Yes. It's like, and that's the bit, that's your bit. I mean, he does what he does. Yeah, but, I, but, but it affects so. you because of presumably old but patterns. But there's all sorts of things. I feel like guilty. I feel yeah, like I yeah. should be getting involved. Yeah, yeah, I get yeah. involved. I fucking yeah, hate yeah, getting involved. Yeah, yeah. I get all resentful. Yeah. Then I feel guilty that I'm resentful. Yes, yes. <laughs> and then. People kind of say, well, David, you've got to do yeah, something. So You're the you, guy that has the knowledge. You and I'm come just... out of your recovery, as it were, for want of a better word. Yeah. You come out of your recovery and you're using again. So then you're a bugger all used to anyone. Exactly. Because, because now your father's recovery or lack of it has become more important than your own. And from that position, you're back on the gear. As it were, mm. so we get that, isn't it? It's, that's the whole, so it's the it's that our recovery is no is clearly is no longer about drugs and drink. You know, we know that it is, but it isn't. But it's more about, isn't it? It's all about relationships. It's all about are we how their codependency again, for want of a better word, you know, whatever that means. It's it's that stuff, isn't it? That you you relapsed, as it were, on your father, mm. um, and we and I could relapse, say, you know, if something happened with my son or my brother. It's do we use the tools that we've learned over years? Do we use the tools to help us in these in real life? This this life stuff that that, that how does it serve you to put your father's existence ahead of your own? Well it must serve you. And because it's a pattern, you've done it before. Well it's I adaptive. have to do it. Yeah, I'm I have son. to. So there's the language, isn't it? So it's all this. It's about who you are, you're his son. David, so, you must do something. So it's all, yeah. And that yeah. we listen to that. Yeah. We listen to our head and we listen to the other people who are saying it. And I mean, it's the same with parents. With uh, when, 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 when parents, I see families kind of being shamed because everyone inside is saying, you should do something, you yes, must do yes, that. You should, yes. you must put him in rehab. You must yes. do this and that. And, and certainly at our facility, yeah, yeah. we don't want to do that no. because it's just yeah. unethical. Well, and how do we support them to hold the line so that they can say, no. No, I'm not going to I'm not going to play this game anymore for me, not for how I look to all of you. And that's about, that's all that. That's the codependency stuff. That's why there's the Alanons, the Naranons, the, the, all of that, isn't it? That they, they put their recovery first because they begin to realize they need to go into some kind of recovery. And that it's not about the user. Because, I mean, that's the, I mean, addicts or users or whatever you want to call yeah. them really know how to look after themselves. Yes, to the, to the detriment and of everyone well, else. Yes. First, to the detriment out. of everyone else. Yeah. Then they get into recovery, whatever you know, and that's good. But I think that's it's realizing, isn't it? It's none of my business. It's none of my business what anyone else does. In the sense of you know, my recovery comes first. And what I've learned over time is that paradoxically, if I put my recovery first. I seem to be a better human being and more helpful and more useful to all of the others. Oh, I'm going to take that. You know, it's a it's a paradox, isn't it? I'm I think sometimes people that. say, "Oh, addicts, they're so selfish." And da, 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 da. It's sort of selfish with a small s. It's 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 like yeah, because if if my son has a crisis, he'll need a father who's truly in recovery to be of any use to him whatsoever, mm. not an enabling uh, father who's who's trying to help him all the time. I mean, I'll end up with a needle on my arm, and I mean, then I'll really help him, won't I? Yeah, well, that's a bit like, ouch for me.
Yeah, yeah. Breakfast time, this is own wine. <laughs> All right, everyone, we'll, we'll leave it there. We'll leave it there. Because We're off to yeah, eat, eat with now. a great Buddha day. <laughs> Thanks, Dave. Thanks very much. Pleasure.